after lunch, by the way, I will try. So I don't see. okay. This is my presentation. I'm part of the Alcala Association devoted to the study, the scientific association devoted to study uh, anomalies on the low energy nuclear reactions. This is the overview of my presentation. Uh, to, to arrive to my experiments, I would like to go first to the background findings about transmutations, because the best, the main results of my uh, experiments on palladium are about uh, transmutation. And in the Alcal Association, we make uh, not only experiments on palladium in hydrogen, but also experiments at, uh, in temperature using uh, tanks, uh, constant and wires coming from uh, ENF uh, Chilani lab and also on uh, nickel powders and other uh, possible fuels for this uh, anomalies. Uh, so, uh, then I will uh, go to the experiments uh, in my lab with uh, stimulation with laser of uh, H2 palladium systems. And then final remarks and conclusions. Uh, our first important uh, background findings is from uh, Piantelli and others in uh, Siena lab working with nickel rods and uh, hydrogen in uh, at a few uh, hundreds of degrees. The temperature was about 350, 400 degrees. And after some uh, experiments, giving a very big excess heat, uh, they analyzed the, uh, the material in the region of the material where they uh, observed some uh, reaction. And they get uh, analysis, ADX, uh, of the material in several zones. This is this is just an example of what they found. And uh, you can see the list of uh, the elements coming from uh, this kind of analysis. And um, uh, there is a, a signature uh, led us to think that some uh, anomalous generation of heat uh, occurred. And uh, as you can see, the only element uh, heavier than nickel is zinc. All the other elements are uh, lighter. Uh, so we have a... Let's go to the others, because uh, otherwise I will uh, <laughs> go slow. Uh, this is uh, uh, some material coming from Luca Gamberale. When he was working in uh, Tirelli Labs uh, and uh, together in the previous years he worked with the Preparata Professor before he died. And uh, he made experiments with heavy water electrolysis with palladium cathodes. And uh, at the end of uh, the experiment he, he analyzed uh, some region of the wire uh, finding uh, lighter elements than palladium. Uh, C and O are usually not considered uh, in the transmutation uh, uh, phenomena because uh, are always present in uh, ADX analysis. But anyway, the peak of the oxygen may be in some case very high. And the second spectrum is coming from and uh, experiments with uh, copper electrodes uh, using uh, uh, having a glow discharge, a system with a glow discharge in the hydrogen atmosphere. And also in this case, you can see 
many uh, materials coming from this analysis in a particular region of the uh, uh, electrodes. Always, uh, even in this case, elements are uh, lighter than copper. This is a particular experiment, I don't know if you are aware of that, using a different kind of stimulation uh, in the reactor. They were using uh, uh, ultrasounds, as uh, is explained in the, in the, in the, the notes. Uh, they had just one hour of ultrasounds, 19 watts, in uh, water, and in very clean water, and uh, the material su submitted to this stimulation was stainless steel, and uh, you can see pictures of this, uh, the material before and after the stimulation, and uh, many uh, hot, hot spots appeared on the surface, and analyzing the elements of these hot spots, they found the, the, the elements in the stainless steel, plus other elements, in also in this case, very light elements of the metal layer of the table. Uh, iron is reported about the percentage of iron in the hot spots is less than in the virgin material. Here I have uh, reported uh, um, an analysis of uh, Constantin Wire coming from uh, Chilani Lab, where we observed some extra heat production in hydrogen at uh, 350 degrees. And uh, analyzing the, the, some uh, pieces of the wire, we noticed a uh, few hot spots. And also in this case, we found in the hot spot lighter elements uh, respect to uh, the composition of uh, constant. Uh, if you uh, pay attention to the, the list, we are in front of magnesium, silicon, <coughs> sulfur, uh, and calcium very often. And uh, here I mentioned the, the work presented this morning by Vittorio Violante and uh, a very interesting uh, paper they published and uh, we can make uh, a few remarks. They observed uh, radio frequency as uh, was shown this morning was detected at the cathode during the test and in the paper they assume that radio frequency is a secondary effect of uh, heat production or maybe the cause of the, of the heat uh, production itself and in the case uh, uh, mentioned they detect an anomalous heat as was uh, said this morning and uh, they analyzed uh, three areas of uh, cathode and they suspected uh, uh, what they found coming from contamination. But I, looking at the list of the elements, I see uh, what I usually find in the, my experiments with palladium. So I reported the, the list of these uh, three areas in the EX analysis. Uh, so as you can see again, you have lighter elements and uh, with respect to the palladium. This is an important experiment uh, I did in the uh, University of Lecce together with uh, Professor Nassisi responsible for uh, microelectronics and uh, electronics and uh, laser lab and uh, I, gave, uh, I, gave, I gave him uh, samples produced in my company, I, now I am retired from ST Microelectronics, I prepared them in 204 uh, uh, palladium thin films on uh, silicon chips and we started to make experiments in uh, Leche Lab and uh, we uh, 
found uh, many hot spots after a stimulation with the laser, helium neon uh, laser, very low power. Uh, as, as you can see in the pictures, there is the melting of the material and uh, many uh, transmutations. What is important in this experiment is uh, that we had inside the reactor uh, every time two samples, one subject to the stimulation with the laser, another one not irradiated with the laser. And in the list of elements you can see that with hydrogen, without the laser stimulation, no hot spots were present in the, in the sample after the experiment, while uh, with the laser stimulation we had a long list of elements, in, also in, uh, even in this case lighter than palladium uh, material element. And uh, you can see on the right of the, 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 the slide, uh, experiments done with deuterium in, the, in Lecce. At that time we were able to make these experiments with deuterium and even without laser stimulation on the deuterium uh, samples we could recognize hot spots and many hot spots. The density of hot spots in this case was about 2000 per square centimeter. The, the, the experiment lasted 10 weeks, by the way, so quite a, a long time. And with deuterium, we had uh, 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 more anomalies than with the hydrogen. With the hydrogen, we needed to have uh, the presence of the laser. And, uh, there is another uh, fact to mention. It, in the previous experiments in 1997-1998, uh, Professor Nassisi, before uh, having a collaboration with me, uh, made some uh, uh, tests and with the palladium and deuterium system, he could detect neutron, strong neutron emission. So, uh, this is a nuclear signature that uh, these anomalies are probably coming from uh, uh, nuclear uh, reactions. Uh, now let's go to my experiments. This is uh, one of my reactor reactors. I have uh, uh, six reactors in my lab. A, a couple of reactors are devoted to this kind of experiments. You can see uh, in the bottom of the slide this, the sample used for helium neon uh, stimulation is a, a chip, a rectangular chip, long 28 millimeters, large, wide uh, 1 millimeter. The, the thickness of uh, the palladium film is 250 nanometers. And we fill uh, with hydrogen the reactor at a pressure of uh, uh, 1 bar and a half. And then we wait for uh, two weeks, uh, and after that we open the reactor, extract the, the sample, and we go to uh, SEM analysis to make pictures and uh, to make analysis of uh, eventual, eventually elements uh, uh, coming from a transmutation. In this case. Uh, the samples are very similar to what we used in Lecce, but there is a different, an important different, difference that, that I need to mention. Uh, to make addition between the palladium and the silicon dioxide on, uh, on the chip, uh, in this case we used chromium. Uh, but in the Lecce experiments we used titanium. So, as uh, we saw this morning, the texture, the texture of uh, the uh, surface of the, of the palladium may be different depending from the substrate, chromium instead of, uh, uh, of titanium. Uh, we found many cavities 
on uh, the, the, the samples after the experiment and analyzing the, the, the cavities, we could find, again, uh, elements very similar to the experiment that I mentioned before as background. Uh, I, we made also experiments with a 405 nanometers wavelength laser on a different uh, chip. Uh, the, the previous was rectangular, now it's uh, uh, square. And we had a transmutation also in this uh, in this uh, samples, but uh, the number of elements we found are a little bit less. And this is strange because the energy of this laser is higher than the helium neon laser, it's uh, 633 uh, nanometers. And, but the effectiveness of this, of this uh, laser seems to be less, even if the energy is higher. So here I uh, show the, the complete list of the elements compared with the list we uh, obtained in the Lecce experiments. And uh, you can see that the elements found in the hot spots are uh, about the same. So, uh, to conclude, the experiment shown confirmed the previous findings uh, where we detected lighter elements uh, respect to the material used, and, uh, <coughs> but in a less extent of, of the previous elements. I think that this depends from the substrate different chromium instead titanium, so the te texture of the surface is different. Uh, the 405 seems uh, less uh, effective, and what is important, continuous monitoring for neutrons and gamma emission never registered deviation from the background spectrum. I only had a uh, neutron emission during the filling of the reactor, one episode of a neutron emission during the filling of the reactor with the sample inside. An accurate analysis of samples not irradiated before irradiation did not show the presence of cavities with the elements found in the samples tested. And so, the, to conclude, uh, the experiments stated uh, as background indicate the presence of transmutation similar to those shown in this presentation. Often associated with other anomalies, neutron emission and excess, excess uh, heat generation. Induced oscillation in the material by ultrasound radiofrequency laser radiation sometimes appears essential for the occurrence of the anomalies. Since some elements attributable to transmutation can easily come from environmental contamination, this is uh, to be underlined, uh, we plan to replicate controls on the samples with accurate SEM analysis before the laser treatment in the reactor. Thank you very much for the attention.